Hey everyone, welcome back to Finance Homefront with me, Craig. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're diving into the hot topic of skyrocketing home prices. With the housing market showing no signs of slowing down, it's a critical issue that affects us all. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that this is not financial advice. If you find this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more insights. Let's get into it. Home prices continue their relentless upward trajectory, leading many to feel as if the situation will never stabilize. And that may very well be the case. We face a housing shortage estimated to be between two to seven million homes. This deficit has only worsened due to the lock-in effect where homeowners hesitate to sell their properties to avoid losing their favorable mortgage rates in today's high interest rate environment. Consequently, the scarcity of available homes means prices are unlikely to drop. In fact, in March, prices increased by 6.5% compared to the previous year, according to an S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller Index released today. On a monthly basis, national home prices rose by one and three tenths percent. This month's report marks another unprecedented peak, noted Brian D. Luke, head of commodities, real and digital assets at S&P Dow Jones indices in the release. We've consistently seen records shattered in both the stock and housing markets over the past year. The 10 city composite showed an eight and two tenths percent increase from the previous year, while the 20 city composite recorded a seven and four tenths percent rise. Among these 20 major cities, San Diego experienced the highest increase in home prices with an 11 and one tenths percent surge in March compared to the previous year, a feat Luke described as remarkable. New York followed with home prices climbing nine and two tenths percent. Regionally, the Northeast continues to be the top performer with an eight and three tenths percent annual gain, demonstrating robust growth compared to other metropolitan markets, Luke said. On the other hand, cities like Tampa, Phoenix, and Dallas, which were top performers in 2020 and 2021, are now growing at a slower pace. This trend reverses the early pandemic pattern which saw a significant increase in home prices in Sunbelt markets. The COVID pandemic was a boon for Sunbelt markets, but the substantial gains over the past couple of years have been in Northern metropolitan cities, Luke explained. On a seasonally adjusted basis, national home prices have reached their ninth all-time high within the past year with all 20 metropolitan markets, posting positive annual gains for for the fourth consecutive month indicating widespread and sustained growth in the housing sector the trend isn't limited to home prices rent prices in the Sun Belt are also experiencing significant declines according to Redfin it's clear why rents are falling and home prices are stabilizing increased construction activity the Sun Belt has seen a substantial uh, increase in new apartment construction in recent years, partially to meet the demand surge brought on by the influx of people during the pandemic housing boom. But now that the boom is over, property owners are struggling to fill vacancies, leading to falling rents, said Redfin's senior economist, Shaharyar Bukhari, in a recent analysis. The positive aspect is that the increase in housing supply in the Sun Belt has improved affordability for renters, offering a valuable lesson for other American cities facing housing affordability challenges. In 2022, San Diego approved just 5,314 new homes for construction, as reported in the city's annual report. The city needs 108,036 new homes to meet its target for the current cycle ending in 2029. Over the last two years, it has only met 10% of its eight-year housing goal. According to Zillow, its home prices are nearly three times the national average, 
and rents are, rents are 42% higher than the national median. As the latest data released today indicates, its home prices rose more than those of any other city. The only solution to this problem is constructing more homes as Redfin's chief executive, Glenn Kelman, previously told Fortune. There has been a fundamental imbalance between demand and supply for decades, remarked Bright, MLS's chief economist, Dr. Lisa Sturdivant, in a statement following today's release. The shortage feels even more acute now, as the large millennial population is in its prime first-time home buying years, while baby boomers are remaining in their homes longer. Home building activity has increased, but the pace of new housing starts is insufficient to address the housing deficit. Additionally, the location of new housing construction does not always align with where the need is greatest. Beyond home prices, mortgage rates are significantly higher than they were during the pandemic and the preceding years. According to the most recent data, the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate is 7 and 14 hundredths percent. There is hope that rates will decrease over the remainder of this year. But even if they do, it is unlikely to reverse the substantial decline in housing affordability since the pandemic. The income required for Americans to purchase a starter home has nearly doubled over the past four years. The cost of home ownership is at an all-time high and renters need to earn almost $80,000 annually to afford the typical rent. Thanks for sticking with us until the end. We've covered a lot today about the continuing rise in home prices and the factors contributing to this trend. It's a complex issue with no easy solutions, but staying informed is the first step. Remember, if you have any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Finance Homefront for more updates and insights. Until next time, I'm Craig, and this is your go-to place for all things finance. Take care.